everyone. Welcome to Stan the Energy Man. Stan Osterman here, coming to you live and direct from beautiful downtown Kailua, Hawaii, where it's a little bit cloudy and rainy. Yesterday, we actually had some thunderstorms in Hawaii, and it was kind of rainy. But yeah, typical nasty winter weather here. But we don't have it as bad as our guest today, who's just complaining about having to put on his long johns. Um, Mike Stritsky is my, my guest today, coming in from uh, New Jersey. Um, he's the the gentleman who started the hydrogen house project in New Jersey and has a lot of projects uh, in the works. And um, he's, he's looked at as one of the most um, prolific hydrogen uh, uh, purveyors in the U S anyway. And uh, actually had a, he had a New York times article put out on him uh, a couple of weeks ago. So we'll be talking about all that stuff, but anyway, welcome Mike. Welcome to the show. Good to have you back. Hey, I almost feel like I'm in your living room. It, <laughs> Is it a little warmer it. there than here? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, it's it's like a nice 79, 80 degrees, I think, today. Yeah, yeah. we're doing something rare. We're doing a, a couple of imports and tours every now and then, but most of our stuff has been stuck to Zoom. Wow. You know? Well, I mean, Mike, uh, the Washington, D.C., we're feeling the ripples of all of the stuff going on in Washington right now. Oh, uh, okay. Well, why don't you give the audience a little bit of a flavor for your uh, the article that came out in the New York Times a couple of weeks ago and what it's kind of led to, and then then we'll get into some of the the stuff that we really I named the I named the show uh, Hydrogen Meets Hollywood. Um, we'll talk about some of that a little bit okay. later on, but get us get us warmed up here. Yeah, so you know um, the uh, New York Times was looking to do an article on what it's like to drive a hydrogen car. Well, when they were searching for who owned the hydrogen car in the Northeast, they came up with only me. So, uh, you know, I got a call from the um, from the reporter that was assigned to do this. And he, um, you know, I told him about who I was, what I was doing, why I was doing it, why I had a car. Um, and he went to the to the website and then I had uh, John send him a link to at war with the dinosaurs. And after seeing that, he went to the editor and said that the story is not the, um, the, the driving the car is not the story, that I'm the story. So he says, this is going to turn into something a little bit bigger. And me and him worked for about three months to put the story together, sending him articles, verifying everything that I've done. Um, and, you know, coming up with a, a version that was... Uh, you know what they wanted to print after the editor wrote it he says you know we're going to try to get this uh, as a front page article in the business section i never i thought was it going to be a complete whole full page so um it was a complete surprise when they aired the article because i didn't even know that it was coming out until i started getting lambasted with people calling from all over the world um but it was a good story. I mean, it, it depicted me a little bit as the nutty professor or, uh, you know, I was going to say uh, Don Quixote jousting at windmills for a little bit, but we know that that's not the story anymore. You know, Christopher Columbus was, uh, was nuts for th saying the world wasn't flat and they were ready to stone him. So um, I feel a little better, you know, after 30 years of doing this, that people are realizing that the world in fact is not actually flat and all the myths about hydrogen are not true and that this is real and viable today. So um, we've gotten a tremendous response from uh, people all over the world. They just finished a, uh, um, a front page article on me in the La Repubblica, which is the largest um, newspaper in Italy. And we're doing one with a German newspaper and a number of other publications now. And uh, I guess the interesting part about it is, you know, I'm getting offers from uh, major networks um, like EarthX TV, you know, Discovery to do, um, you know, a pilot series uh, on these uh, networks. So uh, renewable energy is taking a whole nother turn than it used to be. So before, before where we were downgraded, now people realize, you know, with the whole new administration coming in, uh, global warming, you know, becoming you know, the things of science and, and not of rhetoric that, uh, you know, we've got a chance to turn the ship around and go the other way. You know, obviously right now, hydrogen's the only thing that I've seen of in my lifetime that can actually do it and eliminate 54% of 
of all the transportation greenhouse gases and 40% of all the buildings. So, you know, science says that, you know, with all things being equal, greenhouse gases and burning of fossil fuel is causing us all of these problems, air pollution, health, uh, environmental cleanups, you know, and we can, we can circumvent all of that. And now people are finally seeing that the emperor has no clothes and calling it for what it is. So obviously the whole reason we're all here is to educate people and let them know, you know, that uh, there is a solution and, you know, we're educating to the science and, you know, the business and industry are taking off. The fact that this article ended up, you know, front page of the business section of the New York Times stunned a lot of people to think that we would get this much attention. Whereas before in the Department of Energy, you know, we were, we weren't even included, you know, when they were considering renewables, you know, or energy yeah. storage. So we've come a long way, but we're close to pushing that ball over the top of the hill. And I'm doing everything I can and I'm asking everybody to help me get it over the hill. You know, right now there are no competitors in this industry till it's actually viable and making money. And we're so close to that. And all the new technologies coming out uh, and people that are investing in these large hydrogen plants from biomass, you know, to, uh, uh, you know, leachate from landfills is going to make a huge difference, including burning garbage. You know, they're turning that into syngas. So I get things like this now every day before I wouldn't get anything. Everybody said, hydrogen what? So all of this stuff now is all coming to fruition. You know, Plug Power's had the biggest days in, in you know, tech history with uh, the, you know, the announcements of the investments. You know, they've had, you know, two this last week. You know, one that uh, South Korea is investing $1.6 billion to get fuel cells out in Europe. You know, yeah, that's so, what that's like you said. It's one point six B with a billion B, and right. not million, and that's that's a big time uh, spending. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of plug power, my son got married last year, and and I gave him or last November other, and I gave him uh, twenty shares of plug power for his wedding wedding gift. That could be like giving him uh, Microsoft uh, or you at Packard stock. I'm thinking but IPO. Yep. Well, I mean, we're seeing lots of things. You know, a lot of these companies are all buying up other companies to complete the picture. You know, Plug Power bought Giener, you know, an electrolyzer company that yep. made electrolyzers for submarines. We watched Cummings, you know, buy parts of hydrogenics. So Shell is buying up a bunch of companies right now. And you're looking at, you know, the forklift business, you know, really growing to get volume out there and to get the technology out there. Yeah, and you know what the, the difference is too, a, a lot of times when there's a great new technology that's competitive with other technologies, you'll see big companies like Shell or, or Ford or whoever buy these companies up just to kind of bury them so yeah, that they don't take off. But that, the, the age of that happening in hydrogen is gone because all these companies that are doing these purchases, they're actually growing in hydrogen. And like you say, with air liquid and air products building liquid hydrogen plants just for transportation, um, that sends a huge, huge message. That's hydrogen at a large scale. In fact, I think if, if you look at what's being built in liquid hydrogen in the United States today, it's at least twice, if not three times, all the liquid hydrogen that we've ever made in the continental Americas, including Canada, for the NASA program. And all that extra production is going to clean transportation. Well, I mean, even if you think about the hydrogen that's generated for the gasoline industry, there's enough hydrogen that's generated from just hydrogenating gasoline to power a quarter of the Earth's vehicles. Just on what we, we have already, if we stop using, you know, fossil fuels and, and put that into hydrogen vehicles. I'm hoping this... One of the hope. biggest selling points for converting off of fossil fuels and internal combustion engines is just the efficiency. I mean, all you have to do is tell somebody, why do you want to use an internal combustion engine that's only 25 to 28 percent efficient at best uh, with diesel or, or gasoline when you can use a fuel cell and hydrogen that's not only more like 50 to 60 percent efficient uh, in terms of actual torque at the wheels, but it also, you're only outputting water. 
Well, you know? I mean, just, just do it in the form of just, the, you know, SUV will get somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, 14 miles to the gallon, 14 or 15. And that percentage rate, you can do five times more on the same amount of BTUs with hydrogen. Yeah. And you produce water. You can drink it when you're done. Yeah. I mean, just think what it does for the environment when you're not putting all of these things into the water we drink, the food that we eat, and the air that we breathe. Yeah. I mean, this is really cleaning up the planet. The societal benefits charge for the, for the hydrogen economy is beyond scale as far as repairing the environment and our bodies and our health and our air. You know, so it's much bigger than just the pocketbook. And this will create more jobs than it will ever take, you know, doing the new infrastructure. When you start looking at the upside to hydrogen compared to any downside, which, and, and quite frankly, the only downside I've really noticed in hydrogen is I, I don't like compressing hydrogen because it takes too much energy and stuff. But other than that, it's hard to find a downside to hydrogen. Safety's better, um, efficiency's better. Uh, toxicity that's non-toxic. It you, you can use it for multiple things. You're making byproducts like oxygen when you electrolyze uh, water to make hydrogen. I mean, there's no waste of money. Need, yeah, yeah. Hospitals need pure oxygen. Welders need pure oxygen. Industrial, um, you know, processes need pure oxygen, and that's just a byproduct of making hydrogen. Yeah, I mean, so think of all it. those hospitals that could have used that oxygen in California. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think when people start really doing looking at hydrogen the way you and I do, they'd really their eyes start to open, and that's why I think it's it was great that you spent the time with the New York Times to really educate a writer on the topic, because I think when people look at that article, other other writers look at it, they'll go, "Hey, I need to look at this more," and you'll start seeing it multiply out. So um, that, I well, think know, that was that was great. It's amazing to see how divided their reading pot you know the reading potential of the comments that came in on that article you know i went through all 450 of them and um you know there were the people that were working on 30 year old uh science not realizing that we had solved most of the problems exactly and you had the, the people that were the the battery zealots that didn't understand that batteries are, are you know a band-aid they're not a cure right you know and you know, you have the regular layman that just says it's never going to happen. So education is really the key to making all this happen, which is why we're doing this show, you know, which is why I've devoted the rest of my life to, you know, hydrogen and water. We fix those two, you know, we fixed the planet. We left a legacy for our children and our grandchildren. If we yeah. don't fix it, we left a living hell. So I, I agree. And you know what, we're, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit more about that and start getting into the movie. Uh, we're going to take a quick break here and, uh, and show some, some of the folks that help keep Think Tech going. And then I'd like to get into talking a little bit about uh, War with the Dinosaurs and um, any other productions coming up and uh, where people can go check those out. Because those are real eye openers. And those are the kind of things, just like that article in the New York Times, that's going to help us move forward. So we'll be back in 60 seconds with uh, Mike Stritsky. Welcome back to Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And today my guest is Mike Stritsky, coming live and direct from beautiful downtown New Jersey, <laughs> way on the other side of the continent. So uh, in other words, in other words yeah. one exit off the turnpike. <laughs> yeah. In fact, um, it 
you know, it's tough getting guests on on a show when you host in Hawaii because there's there's a five hour time difference between here and New Jersey. So he's past his bedtime almost, and and good thing I, I didn't even sleep, had, huh? <laughs> and I haven't even had lunch yet. So anyway, Mike, we were talking about um, some of the movies coming up, and you know, I wanted to comment that that movie at War with the Dinosaurs was really kind of an important movie because just like you mentioned you know so many people their their knowledge of hydrogen is so ancient or so um i want to say prejudice is probably the right word because people look at elon musk and dr chu and all the quote unquote experts um who who have a, a big microphone and can address a lot of people but unfortunately they're given them pretty bad information and that can be totally damaging for a really long time. And A War with the Dinosaurs, I, I thought it was just an exceptional movie. Um, great detail, great documentary. Um, so I know you were involved. They they spent quite a bit of time talking to you on that. You have you have a, a, a feature uh, two, in there. Two, two or three segments in there, yeah. Uh, the, the movie At War with the Dinosaurs is, you know, a work of, uh, of five and a half years. I mean, we basically started with the history and you know, told people the story, you know, from all the way from 1978 and what all the presidents have said that we need to attain energy independence, and they just keep passing it on to the next president who does nothing about it. You know, you we have to cure the disease, and we, as President Clinton said, we have to take this seriously and get down and do it. Well, I'm hoping for that we have a president now that will actually do that. You know, number one is COVID. Number two is global warming. And, you know, we have to do things like other countries do that, that makes sense, not, you know, that, that not are, are politically correct. Those days we don't have time for because we, we're killing ourselves if we don't, both our economy and our, and our children. We created all these technologies and others are all capitalizing on them. It's about time we bring industry back here and get our bang for our buck. You know, no, I, I we lost a whole generation. Yeah. We've, we've helped other countries get rich off of so many things, including the internet and, and you know, all the, all the things that are created in a free country. And look who's making money off of it now is China and Russia and, you know, people that couldn't be creative because they lock all their people in little holes and don't let them talk to each other. Um, but we take so much for granted and we just let things go by, like you say, pass it on to the next president to deal with because, you know, maybe you're getting more money from big oil or somebody in your campaign fund. And I mean, that's, that's not right. You know, in the movie, we talked about, you know, different classes of society. Right now, we're at a class zero. You know, in this century, hopefully we get to be a class one where we're not living off of the fossil fuel assets of the Jurassic Age. And we're, we're using the power of a star, our sun. You know, but the thing is, is, you know, around when all of us get together to save Spaceship Earth, you know, race, creed, color, none of that makes any difference. We're all citizens of Spaceship Earth, this big spaceship that's traveling 60,000 miles an hour through the atmosphere. We have to get together jointly to save our home, okay? And that's what I'm looking for is that we all get together and do things for the good of the many, not the good of the few, you know, so that we give everybody something to lose and we live within the boundaries of of science and our ecostructure and we become part of it again you know not the destroyer of it so what are we some have of all the, the technology so what are those upcoming events uh, including a war with the dinosaurs that we were talking about um offline a little earlier is there another project you say coming up that's uh that's going to be talking about um this you know what we should be doing yeah i mean it, we've steadily been getting more and more interest in hydrogen you know as um, you know, industry is starting to make the invest investment and people are learning the truth. Okay. And th that this is the cure and it is on the menu. You know, we have to put it on the menu and you have to have a product you can buy and invest in. That's my two big goals right now is to have both. We're do building a new jewel box now that will be able to replace the microgrids uh, as act as microgrids in California where the utility you know, took a hundred years to get the wires to them. And they, they went bankrupt three times over these fires. The grid is never going back in Northern and Southern California 
where they've got to run hundreds of miles of line to get to your house. If you run a generator, there's no way you can afford to live there. If you're doing solar, you're going to be paying for batteries three to five years. All right, at an enormous cost and then have disposal problems. Hydrogen in this case is the only answer where you can store unlimited kilowatt hours. You can do large scale seasonal storage. And even now the power companies are waking up after doing battery demos for backup power and having many fires, you know, and lives lost uh, to going to hydrogen storage. You know, yeah. you have Bill Gates powering the, the, the next cloud, which is the size of two nuclear power plants on hydrogen. So yeah, that's, that's one of my frustrations has been working with utilities. And it's not that they're, I, I don't think they're evil people, um, but number one, they're focused on shareholders. And number two, they're all run by engineers. And, and as soon as you tell the engineers, you got a great new idea for storing energy. They say, well, why would I do that when I have a diesel generator over here that uh, I can just flip the switch and it's on? And they, they just don't want to listen. I and guess he, that's the hope in the next 60 years that it, our future will be more advanced diesels, right? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're up to what, tier four now, and they're more expensive and they're a little bit cleaner, but it's all after exhaust cleanup. So that means you're wasting energy. You're well, wasting the, the one energy. thing that, that, that has to change in all of this, I sit at ground zero. I see everything new that's coming on. I've seen all, I've, I've been in all the fights of the past. All right. But the battle lines are being drawn. You know, everything is getting out front. Put your fisticuffs up, not backdoor deals anymore because, you know, now it's becoming a threat to them. This is no different than, you know, a Blockbuster looking at Netflix, thinking that, that they're going to they're gonna destroy them and crush them. Or the big phone companies going after cell phones and laughing at them that they're a joke. You know, this this stuff is advancing very quickly now as technology is advancing. Batteries were at the end of the life cycle. We've run out of elements on the periodic table. We are now at the pinnacle where we can change this stuff. And with social media out there, we can get it out there and the message to the people. And we hope that, you know, the, the people will do the right thing. Vote with their checkbooks. You know, if you want to see something happen, you got to go out and buy it. Capitalism is what's going to drive this. So, well, Mike, I tell you what, we're, we're getting close to the end of our time here. Can you give us an idea of where we can start looking at, uh, like at War with the Dinosaurs? How would you, how would the audience go and track down at War with the Dinosaurs if they wanted to watch it? I know it's available on several formats, like, like you mentioned, 90 Yeah. Netflix so, now. you know, one of the ways they can go to my website, they can make a $25 donation and they can own it. It's also available on iTunes. It's available uh, on YouTube. Um, it's available on VMO. So there are lots of platforms. If you Google at war with the dinosaurs, it'll take you to one of those. If you want to own it, you know, you want to go to go through Apple and that's the one we have on our website. But okay. it's well worth anybody looking at this. And we're going to do a, a demo uh, probably in about two weeks. I'll let you know where it's going to be open to a, a number of people from the public. So okay. we're going after legislators. We're going after the press and the media. And, you know, it's interesting thing. The New York Times article came out and Sunita, who's the head of the hydrogen program, uh, basically sent me a nice note congratulating me on the article. And she said she sent that article out to all of the new Biden people coming in as a must read. So, you know, one plus one plus one, we make the army. You know, we just have to fight unconventional warfare from here on out, you know, to, de to defeat these guys. We can't do it on their terms. Yeah, that's great. So when, when you get the, the information, may, uh, pass it on to me and I'll, I'll definitely put it up on my shows. We'll talk a little bit more about it on one of my future shows. Absolutely. Get everybody linked into, uh, into those videos. And uh, yeah, we're I partnering. you can we're partnering, with the, we're partnering with a number of groups you know, like Sustainability Now, uh, Trammell's Crows, Earth, EarthX TV, um, you know, the, obviously the Hydrogen House Project, um, you know, to get the word out and we're using all of our mailing lists, you know, to, to reach critical people. I've been talking to the New Jersey uh, legislature and assembly the last couple of days about doing a mass showing of the movie to, and to start to get legislation to get hydrogen refueling stations in. So we've got three sources of funding um, 
that are available for that. We're looking to put a uh, uh, a fee on DMV registrations of three dollars to be used for renewable infrastructure. Uh, we're looking at um, overcharge money from the from uh, the Board of Public Utilities. They have a huge, you know, multi-million dollar fund, uh, you know, for that's done for renewables. Uh, and you know, we're we're looking to to do just direct legislation to get these things in. If you bring the stations and the infrastructure, it's going to happen. We were smart enough to, you know, back in the back in the Great Depression days to to give people jobs by putting in infrastructure. You want to create jobs? Let's start the hydrogen economy by putting in infrastructure. The car people will make the cars. I guarantee it if there's a way to fuel it. The forklifts will come. The lawnmowers will come. The airplanes are coming. Boeing just committed to building a plane by 2030. So every day there's something about hydrogen in the news. As before, 10 years ago, no one did hydrogen what? Yep. Or atom bomb what? Or Hindenburg what? But those yeah, are changing. That's exciting to hear Boeing jumped in. And of course that comes on the heels of Airbus announcing they're gonna come up with three hydrogen powered aircraft by 2035 and uh, have them all certified by then. So. You're right. It's finally catching on. Ship Norway is building some hydrogen power, fuel cell powered ships, you know, large cargo ships. Um, San Francisco has a hydrogen ferry boat coming online with some of our friends that used to work at Sandia National Lab. Um, there's just a lot going on. And the newsletters, I, I had um, Keith Malone from California Fuel Cell Partnership on my last show. And the information that he puts out, it's getting so vol voluminous that he can't. He, he's got to condense it all because he can't get it all in one newsletter because there's just too much there. And he, he's starting to send out more newsletters and and scrunch down the, the briefing so he can get all the articles in his uh, newsletter. You could do but a whole show on just what Japan is doing with Australia. You know, they're building liquid ships. They're building anhydrous ammonia ships to carry hydrogen. And they're putting it in their natural gas supply where they already have a half a million hydrogen homes. Yeah. I mean, it's happening in real time and we're sitting here watching the miracle. You know, well, as, as Dr. Meku Kaiku said, we're present at the birth. Well, I have to get Jay Fidel to fork over some money to send me to Japan so I can check out everything going over on over there and do a, do a couple of shows from Japan. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen right away, but eh, we'll see. Yeah, take my way. Uh, <laughs> my Japanese is pretty good. <laughs> yeah, they, they'd probably recognize you. You'd probably be a hero over there. <laughs> anyway, Mike, we've hit our 30 minutes and uh, it. I, I just like to thank you for uh, for being on again and and sharing some current information with us. I'm sure people can still look up that article from the Washington, uh, New York Times, rather. And, yeah, just uh, Google my name and, and New York Times. It's the name of the article is called The Gospel of Hydrogen. Great. All right. All right. So, so uh, Mike, thank yeah, you. Anybody who wants to uh, contact me, you know, this is my retirement. And this is what I've dedicated my uh, rest of my gas and my gas tank to hydrogen right. gas, by the way. <laughs> okay, Mike. Well, thanks again for all your time. And uh, I know you're busy, man. And we'll have to have you on in a couple more months and get caught up with you again. But thanks again. And uh, to everyone Anybody there, wants to see what's going on, hydrogenhouseproject.org. My phone number's on there. Give me a call. All right. And all right. to all the viewers out there, mahalo for watching. And Stan Energy Man will be back next week. Aloha.